welcome to Glasgow in Scotland. A very cold Glasgow today. Um, you're looking now at some churches to the west of the city, and right behind me is Garnet Hill Synagogue, 115 years old. With me, I have the harness of the show, Eric Jacob. Eric. Shalom. Shalom. Shall we go in? There are 7,000 Jewish people in Glasgow. It's very encouraging here in Glasgow to see a great resurgence of religion, especially in the Jewish student society. A number of them are taking Aliyah. Scotland is surrounded by the people of 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 the people. את הקילט, למשל, החצאית המפורסמת, לבשו כאן לפני הולדת ישו, והיא נוחה לאנשי ההרים ולאנשי הצבא. עד למאה שעברה לא היו כאן יהודים רבים. הקהילה היהודית הראשונה, דיסקוטלנד, נוסדה ב-1816 באדינבורו. אחר כך נוסדה גם קהילה בגלזגו. בסוף המאה ה-19 ובתחילת המאה ה-20, כשהחלה ההגירה מאירופה המזרחית, באו לגלזגו מתיישבים יהודים רבים. ארץ יפה להפליא קיבלה את פנינו. אמנם קרה מאוד באקלימה, אך ירוקה לעין, מלאה ימות מסתוריות והרים גבוהים. באנו לפגוש את פרופסור סר אייב גולדברג, מבני הקהילה היהודית בגלזגו. פרופסור גולדברג הוא מדען מפורסם, חוקר מחלות דם ואיידס. Uh, he came to Newcastle and he later went to Edinburgh um, as a, a Malamed. My mother of Ashom came from uh, Katastrinislav, is now called Nyepopetrovsk, and they met uh, and they married in 1914. And uh, there were uh, four daughters, and I came at the end. I was uh, the only son, the fifth child. And I went to school. Uh, in Edinburgh and the university, uh, in Edinburgh University, I always wanted to be a doctor. In 1947, I was mobilized to, to the, uh, the British Army as a young doctor, and I was sent out to, to Egypt at that time, to a place called Moasker near Ismailia. It was while I was there that I had a wonderful opportunity of, uh, of going to uh, to, to what was then called Palestine, Israel. Uh, it, it was very difficult for a Jewish person to go there, but somehow I was asked to go to a special course on malaria. It was a very great experience uh, to see uh, Israel for the first time. You must remember uh, that uh, as a child we had spoken about Israel and, and uh, learned so much about it, and it, it was then the period uh, of the beginning of the War of Independence, and it was a very great emotional feeling. When I came back uh, to the Canal Zone afterwards, uh, on one occasion um, I saw the, uh, the, the Egyptian army, parts of it, coming back in their trucks, and the soldiers with the torn uniforms, etc., uh, having come from uh, the wars. Uh, beaten and and I, I knew that something pretty desperate was going on at that time in 1948 I think it must be May 1948 and uh, I well knew uh, the declaration of independence uh, by Ben Gurion uh, at that time and this was a very great moment of course and it, to me it, it seemed uh, a paradox to be in Egypt <laughs> at that time in the in the house of bondage uh, and to be at that time while Israel was being proclaimed uh, a Jewish state. In the 50s, he worked with Dr. Abe Goldberg in London at the university and then he received a job in the United States for research on the blood of the blood. In 1963, he was able to work in Israel. While I was there, I uh, met uh, Chaim Sheba uh, he was a very interesting fellow, most interesting man. He had been the first director of medical services uh, of uh, the Israeli army uh, to Ben-Gurion. And he told me a lot of stories about Ben-Gurion, what a fantastic man he was. At the visit of this visit, he remembered a lot about Ben-Gurion. 
Paula Ben Gurion uh, came uh, along, came to the meetings we had um, at Herschlia. He, he was staying at, I think it was the Acadia uh, Hotel. He was on holiday and he was swimming. He liked swimming, uh, uh, Ben Gurion. And he gave a talk to this group of American physicians there. Very impressive, very good speaker, very dynamic, and he really electrified uh, the whole group. But Paula Ben Gurion was at the back uh, of the. He was at the front, and, and she was at the back. And every now, and I was sitting about midway, uh, and she was just behind me. And every now and again, she would interrupt him. <laughs> she would say, uh, "Not this," <laughs> you see. And it was. It, she was clearly uh, a, a very בביקור נוסף ב-1966 נערך המפגש המרגש. a bedroom, a small trestle bed, very dynamic figure, most dynamic. And he got quite interested in me, uh, he, coming from Scotland, and, uh, and he wanted to, he, he, he was very keen to know what made me tick. And he asked me uh, uh, so many things. One, one was quite interesting, he said, do you know the Isle of Man? Ah, he said, the Isle of Man, he said, my son married a Goya from the Isle of Man. I was wondering why he went to that. But later, he, he said to me, he, he, very, he, he looked at me very sternly. I, I said, he said, what does Israel mean to you? Dr. Ab Goldberg himshikh b'avodat ha-mekkar shelo al mechalot dam b'London u b'arcot ha-brit. B-1967, kibel toar professor, u b-1970, hitmana li nahel mechleket nifgaim u mechalot dam. I got to know quite a bit about, in addition to blood diseases, to about the drug treatment of other diseases. And in 1980, uh, I was asked to be a chairman of the Committee in Safety of Medicines, Committee in Safety of Medicines, in London. This is a United Kingdom uh, committee, of a government committee, uh, which was set up in 1973 really as a result of the thalidomide disaster. זו אותה תרופה שגרמה לזעזוע בעולם ולידת ילדים פגומי איברים. על התמדתו במשך השנים ופעילותו החשובה זכה הפרופסור להוקרה מאוד מיוחדת. One Shabbos morning I got a letter saying that the Queen was uh, mindful of bestowing a, a, a knighthood on me. My wife and children um, were allowed into the main hall. It was quite exciting, in fact. Uh, you felt your heart beating faster. The sword on the shoulder here and there, and, and you put the, uh, the medal, <laughs> and then I joined my uh, family. And that was it. Maase Avot Siman Levanim. Bno shel Professor Abe Goldberg, David, mamshikh ke aviv bechekar machalot adam, hatrufot vha aids. Bitkhum zhe nikhlalot gam bayot khevratiyot hanogot liznut ule homosexualiyot. At the time, of course, uh, David was very interested in and the work uh, that I was doing, and I used to discuss it with him, some of these problems on drugs. And, of course, with AIDS beginning to rear its ugly head, the uh, drug that might, in fact, uh, conquer AIDS has not been discovered yet. So that is a problem. But there was another aspect to the drug problem as well, and that is the abuse of drugs, the things that... David is doing, uh, is as an individual, is a part of this huge worldwide effort uh, to deal uh, with the plague. I'm um, an epidemiologist, and I first came into this field in 1987. Uh, I was uh, at that particular time working with patients and with a lot of AIDS patients, in fact, in this hospital here in Rakhil. My first activity, in fact, at, at that time was to explore avenues um, which could perhaps prevent the epidemic. 
the HIV epidemic uh, among injecting drug users in this city because at 50 to 60 uh, injectors actually sharing the one uh, needle and syringe and uh, sharpening the needle with a, uh, with a matchbox to, to, to keep it sharp. And I was involved, along with many other people, uh, in trying to get needle syringe exchange uh, introduced here. And in 1988, we had our first needle exchange um, uh, in this particular hospital. And by 1993, we have uh, a very comprehensive uh, scheme of needle exchanges uh, in the city, dealing with two to 3,000 injectors. People are injecting with needles, therefore they need clean needles to prevent infection. They come in with their old injecting needles, they show us how many needles they've got. It's generally 10 needles and syringes. They put them in our bin here, um, and then we will give them clean needles, and they'll have these 10 needles which will last them a couple of days, and they will come back again. We give them condoms in case they're indulging in sex. We we'll also give them vitamin that can maintain their health. We think that this, um, the needle exchange, has uh, probably helped prevent uh, a major epidemic of HIV uh, in this population. Israel and, um, and Scotland are quite interesting countries to compare because the populations are very similar. There's five million people, people in Scotland and uh, between, I think, four and five million uh, in, in Israel. So um, it's interesting to, I think, compare the different uh, the epidemics in, in these countries. Um, in Scotland so far, we've seen about 2,000 diagnosed as HIV uh, infected. And in Israel now, I think the, the figure is just over, just over 1,000. Certainly the, the problem exists in, in both countries. A lot of females here, uh, they usually inject heroin. Um, three to four times a day, uh, and they spend 30, 40,000 uh, pounds uh, per year on, on their habit. And the women, of course, uh, uh, as well as shoplifting, they, uh, they're involved in prostitution to finance uh, their habit. <laughs> Each individual uh, <laughs> tries to actually make a brick uh, for the wall, as it were, for the building against AIDS. AIDS is a terrific problem, very, very difficult problem because it's a bit of a moving target, as we all know. This high-risk group, we have to, I mean, the injecting drug users, and also, of course, the uh, gay men, we have to prevent infection in these groups. Uh, these are the target groups we must prevent infection in, uh, because if we do that, it will prevent infection then moving out into the, the wider uh, heterosexual uh, population. ב-19 בפברואר נהיה באיסטנבול, טורקיה, ונספר את סיפורו של צלם הסטילס המפורסם, איזט קריבר, 